everyone. Um, so it's a bit late. I imagine you've had a full day and you're probably a bit tired, so I'll try not to um, impose too much uh, and present a project that is quite close to our hearts, mine and my colleagues um, in, uh, in this, uh, in this uh, geospatial uh, activities that we are, that we are doing. So, um, what it is about, I'm gonna go very, very shortly through this introductory uh, slide. It is basically, a, um, at this point, it's basically a project that uh, the company that I work for is implementing with support from the European Space a Agency. Ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. okay, thank you. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, so uh, it has a very long name, and about that, I'm going to ask your help at some point for uh, for finding a better one. Uh, we have had a first phase, let's say, that has ended, and we're very happy to say that we will continue what we've started uh, uh, with support from ESA again, and. Um, um, let me share a bit more about that uh, as we as we go. So, I don't know how many people remember this uh, this um, graph, <laughs> but uh, the beginning of this journey was in 2016. Uh, what happened there was that the company that I had at that time started to work was part of an association of companies for remote sensing, and these guys at that point we're trying to understand if open source uh, is worth the trouble, uh, meaning that if they are to do any kind of support or any kind of activity to bring open source to their community of companies. And at that point, my boss said, okay, Kodrina, I know you are very into open source. You go to these conferences, these are the tools that you use, so what do you think? Can you answer this question? Do, should we uh, get ourselves involved? And I said, of course, yes, I want to do it. And then um, I had the impression, of course, naively, that I will be able to finish this task very, uh, very smoothly, seamlessly, and very fast. And to my very surprise, even though that uh, I had at that time been working for years with open source, I was part of the community, I was coming to Phosphor G conferences, I had no idea how big, how dynamic, how vast and how powerful actually our ecosystem of these um, solutions actually is. So I had to present something to people that were not necessarily very fond of open source because most of the companies were companies developing proprietary uh, solutions. I had somehow to present what is open source, how it looks like, if it's worth it. So after some time, we decided that the best way would be to offer a picture of it, try to map it and show it how, uh, how big it is. It was quite an interesting effort that we started. Um, this was, these were the first steps. It was very simple. We started with a Google spreadsheet and we started to uh, just document the project, um, what kind of governance it had, if it was desktop, if it was server, if it was web tool, um, if it was mobile. Um, and we tried, to, we tried to look at the programming languages that were, that were used for its development and to the, um, uh, to the licenses, to the type of open source licenses used. But another thing that we thought was very important was to actually map the interdependencies between, uh, between, these, uh, between these projects. So this is how it started and I went, I presented to the board of directors of this uh, European Space Agency, uh, European um, Association of Remote Sensing Companies. I did my best, my best was not enough. <laughs> so at that point they decided, okay, so open source exists, it's mature, it's out there somewhere, let, others pe let other people uh, handle it and support it, maintain it and so on. We're not going to uh, invest uh, something into this. But the thing is that while doing this exercise, we understood how powerful this kind of a tool can be for us as a community from so many 
points of view from uh, finding tools that can assist you in your work, from um, uh, presenting why you would use open source components for a specific uh, for a specific service requirement and so on and so forth so even though we didn't got any, we didn't get any funding at that point uh, we started to continue in on uh, um, documenting the way that I showed you uh, open source solutions that we would know of find out come across at different conferences that we participated and so on uh, so here is a short, uh, a short history of uh, what we did. We continued to look for resources to fund because we understood that this, uh, this tool, if you'd like, uh, you know, there were things definitely uh, in need of, uh, of improvement, meaning not having a Google spreadsheet to collect <laughs> this information, but uh, we, we weren't successful until 2023 when ESA actually looked at us and said, okay, this might be, this might be something, so let's see what, what we can do. Uh, the initial plan was that what we wanted to do was to lay the foundation of a tool to which people can contribute and the result can be uh, can be used uh, by the community as well. And when I say the community, I don't want to say only the open source community, the entire geospatial community. So we had, um, we had a series of, of activities and understanding how best to depict these phosphor G projects. What exactly were we documenting? And we had some uh, work meetings, formal and informal workshops with people from the community trying to best uh, explain and for us as well to understand how and what to, to document in order to make this tool as useful as possible. And, um, of course, some of these informations can be uh, extracted, harvested automatically from the Git repositories. Uh, but others, uh, but others uh, cannot. For example, uh, one kind of, one category of information that cannot be extracted is, uh, um, for example, related to the main functionalities of the tool, if you're interested in a tool that has high cartographic capabilities and so on and so forth. So these had to be manually and still are manually documented. So here is a screenshot with respect to what we manually document and what we, uh, what we uh, automatically document. And um, I'm not going to insist too much on this. However, this is how the interface uh, where we can, uh, where we are actually doing the, uh, the manual documentation of this software looks like. And why I'm showing it to you is that, as I've mentioned, we want this tool to be a tool um, uh, for the community, but also with the support of the community, because the true added value of this OS4Geo is not the infrastructure itself, not the, the, the platform or the, the database itself, but actually what it contains, all of these, all of these projects. And the reality is that at this point, everything that is in OS4Geo, and I invite you to take a look, everything that is there has been documented by the implementation team. <laughs> so be gentle with us if you find any kind of uh, error when it comes to especially the manually documented information like the standards that the software is compliant with. Or uh, with respect to the, um, to the main functionalities, maybe we've overlooked something, we've missed something. Uh, there is a possibility, of course, of uh, interacting with us and letting us know, you did this mistake, please correct it. But what would be even better would be to become a contributor. And we have buttons with become a contributor all over the website and on our graph. Is not, uh, as you've seen, there is, there, it's not that difficult to, uh, it's not difficult at all actually to, uh, to insert this kind of information. It takes, especially if you're a person that is familiar 
with the project, you're the maintainer, you are a power user of the project, you know exactly what that, what that software does. So this kind of information can be collected in five minutes. And without a doubt, it, it, uh, it will be uh, better than uh, for, for us to, to introduce it. So another thing that is important and where we, uh, that we believe it's, is essential for the added value that this tool brings is related to the actual connections and interdependencies between these projects. That is why, for example, in, uh, inside, our, uh, uh, inside our graph at this point, uh, we don't have the, all, the, all the projects that we have in the database. That means that we have not successfully managed to connect all of them because we, didn't, we don't know, we didn't find the, uh, the dependencies and, and so on. So that is where you will see the differences in the uh, in the, two, in the two numbers. So there are different types of contributors and contributors that you can, contributions that you can bring. This is, uh, this is a, a list with what you can and can't do. At this point, the admin is with the implementation team, but the, um, our goal and our, um, our uh, I would not like to say end goal, but our, our scope is for this project to outlive us. So at some point to just migrate it to an, uh, to an open source foundation or to um, under a bigger umbrella that can, uh, that can take care of it as a, as a tool. And in that, uh, in that respect, we have also been quite careful that everything we do from the code, from the way that we document and why we document these projects the way we do and so on to be as transparent as possible. Um, we have a governance model for the, for the project itself. Everything is based on the uh, foundation uh, principles of the open source initiative. So um, we hope that this way of doing things would give you the extreme confidence, let's say, that your time into, your time and effort into adding your project to this os for geo is, uh, will always remain as a, as a public good. So apart from the graph that probably some of you have accessed and seen, uh, and you have there some filters, uh, possibility of filtering the data, for example, with respect to license, with respect to, uh, to the category, functionality, organization, and so on. We also, of course, offer the data in a programmatic manner. We have a REST API exposed uh, we, uh, with, uh, with these available filters uh, listed there at this, at this point. Of course, we only have one big a uh, big requirement or request, kind request, is that if you ever use, and I hope <laughs> very much that you would use what we do, that you use the information in this database, please mention the name of the project. And uh, if you would let us know, we have a wiki where you get, um, uh, a git where you can put information related to if you've ever used this information in a course, I don't know, to pitch to your boss why you should use these software and not the other one and so on, uh, please, uh, it, would, it would be nice, <laughs> let's say, to, for us to, to also know that what we're doing is actually used as we, as we wanted to in the first place. We have, uh, we, we are considering of loading the database in a regular, uh, uh, with regularity in Zenodo for, uh, for a digital object identifier, so it makes it easier to, to reference it, but we don't have that at this time. So these are just a very few insights into what the phosphor G ecosystem looks, at this, looks like at this point. Um, I'm not going to insist too much, but for me at least, personally, that number 475 is quite impressive. And uh, I've went through a lot of them, uh, tested some of them, uh, read about others, and without a doubt, it's, um, we are in a, in, a, in a mature place and with 
with all capabilities necessary to function in an operational, in an operational manner. Uh, as mentioned, we have only 354 connected into, into the graph. We're still, we're still working there, but your help would be super highly appreciated. Uh, so yes, yeah, so these are other other kinds of uh, other kinds of um, of statistics with relate to the governance model. So we have only uh, two projects that are duocracy based, at least according to what they say. Anyway, as mentioned, if you find any kind of errors in what we have in the database, we will be more than happy to to correct it. So what do we do this? What, what is it all for? <laughs> um, I've, I've mentioned uh, how we started it and why do we think that it's a, a useful contribution to the community that we are also part of and where we're also working and going to conferences and uh, even having fun. Right? So um, apart, from, apart from that, apart from a clear view on this ecosystem of open source for geospatial solutions. We're also looking, we're starting to look um, in, the, in the second phase to how, how to put more use into all this data that we collect and how to bring even more added value based on the work that we've done now. So we are considering uh, turning our eyes towards a very complicated uh, or um, complex uh, problem related to the actual health of the software uh, project, which of, of course, as all of you know, is not, a, is not a trivial task. And that leads us back, right back to 2005. Probably some of you know about the, uh, the state of open source GIS reports that Paul Ramsey was um, was compiling, I think he compiled three or four at that, at that time, and he had some very good and clear questions related to what a software uh, project's health, uh, how that can be um, understood. And the questions are on the, on the slides. I'll not, I'll not uh, bore you by, by rereading them. So, what we, what we hope for in the future is uh, for this Osphor Geo to become this tool. Yes? Oh, three minutes, okay. <laughs> so uh, for, this, uh, for this Osphor Geo to become a tool uh, that um, can be used uh, within, the, within the community, even if we talk about academia, if you want to teach about this ecosystem, uh, even, about, uh, even in commercial and, uh, and so on. And we, with this, with this uh, let's say, second, uh, second phase that we are, oh, oh, I have another slide and I really want to talk about it because, uh, and I'll make it quick. Um, working in this, uh, in this last year at this project and participating and talking about what we're doing, I understood quite fast that there are a lot of big organizations out there that are not necessarily related to code development or to open source anything to that are quite interested in open source technology and these solutions again is not necessarily related to geospatial so we are considering that giving this we like to think powerful tool that we're trying to build is that it would be a very good direction towards its sustainability, as mentioned before, we won't be, after we won't be here, um, to partnership with these, uh, with these uh, big and strategic organizations, and we're already started to work, so we're not looking only at the usual suspects that you can see in the, uh, on the bottom, but we're also looking, for example, at United Nations that I've just, yes, that I've just uh, just discovered that for a year they have an open source department within their technology technology unit. So uh, there are, I think that there are uh, more ways to um, to support this uh, this initiative, as long as it's um, uh, as long as it's um, supported by the community as well with the data. 
as mentioned, we want to investigate more uh, into the into the health of these uh, of these projects. We've already started our research. We are very we are at very 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 beginning, and that is why we need a bit of steering, a bit more of steering. And here, if you um, I don't know if it is possible, but if you can uh, take a look at this three minute survey that we put uh, put up in order for us to better understand what the community in its different stages, I mean, even if you're a developer, you're a maintainer, you're a product manager or a project officer or you're a CEO, what does it, uh, what does it mean for you? What does a healthy software means to, means to you? And thank you so much. Thank you very much, Kudrina. Um, I guess you understood by now that Google said maybe there are questions. <laughs> uh, that Kudrina is a technical geographer, an open source GIS and remote sensing power user, and uh, she has also been involved heavily in the Romanian open source community. Yes. <laughs> well, who of you have been in Bucharest for Phosphor G? Yeah, so she was part of the local organizing committee. Good. Um, yeah. Thank you very much for the for this insight. Are there any questions? So, does your graph just show that everything we do is balanced on top of Martin Davis's shoulders? Does your graph show that everything we do is balanced precariously on the top of Martin Davis? Okay. Hi. Yeah. So, seems to be a lot of work gathering all this information, but it seems to be easy to be deprecated. So, in a couple of years, many projects may be dead, or maybe you want to keep the latest version and they are not there. Is there any plan or way to try to keep that up to date after the big work of creating it? Uh, yes, uh, one idea is related to having a regularly update for all projects with respect to the automatic harvest data. When it comes to the manual um, collected data, for example, if you add a new group of functionalities to your software, that is not something that we can do, or even if it's not related to the company, even if it's, for example, a project within us, um, OSGEO, this is something that can be updated by the actual maintainer in the, in the software. And the, what, the way that we try to build it is to take as little time as possible for people to actually have to insert anything or open anything. So to keep the pressure of adding another thing or maintaining another thing at a minimum as possible. But yes, we have plans of keeping this in, in, in regularly update. Thank you. Any other questions? It's my sports class. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, nice presentation. Uh, I'm interested about the insights you get from the, what you call this, the data collection you have. So are there any kind of recommendations you could provide to, say, members of the community. Some of us would be here as a business, you know, starters or, you know, wanting to start their own uh, businesses built on top of the open source stack. Or how about for the funders and the sponsors of these projects? Um, thank you for the question. Uh, this actually brings up a point that I, um, I omitted to mention. Through this tool, we have absolutely no inclination of saying this is better than this. We want to make it like um, a picture of the entire ecosystem. And with respect to recommendation from our side, that again, we like to see ourselves as the technical people that work under the hood and the decision whether you want to use a tool or another one 
uh, to be only for the for the people that are actually um, investigating the solutions for their requirements. Um, another thing that we we want for this, we hope that this tool could assist, is actually having a one-stop shop of where to go and look for what you need. Because uh, you don't have to search in, for example, in Google, you can, uh, you can try and see uh, how many or which are the projects that are answering your requirements. For example, you need an MIT licensed software that does, uh, I don't know, mobile data collection. So you can find that through an, easy, through an easy filtering, or you can use the API to extract this information. But we do not want to, under no circumstances, to have any kind of recommendation saying this is better than this. It's definitely not our place to do that, and we won't. Uh, so that's another thing why we believe that transparency in everything that we do, why we document, how we document, and um, what else is going to, to appear in this, uh, in this OSFOR Geo is going to be clearly transparent and explained at our best uh, capability. So I hope I answered the question. Um, good, there was one more question, but the person who quest uh, I wanted to ask them eh, might take a little bit longer, so maybe you can just raise your hand and you take that offline afterwards. <laughs> And uh, a round of applause again for Kudrina. Thank you very much.